back to the Academic Book Review. Today, we are taking on a really critical mission, trying to understand this massive tectonic shift happening in journalism. It's a change being driven almost entirely by technological innovation. We're going to dive deep into how artificial intelligence is challenging, changing, and maybe ultimately strengthening the role of the modern reporter. Yeah. And the sources we've synthesized for today really focus on a kind of a future blueprint for journalism. All this material centers on the rise of AI, the newsmaker. So the journalist who sees that AI isn't a threat to their job, but, you know, an indispensable tool. A tool for accountability and scale. And this adaptation, it's not really negotiable, is it? We're not talking about some far-off theoretical future. The economics here are just, they're staggering. I mean, PricewaterhouseCoopers estimates AI could add something like, what, $15.7 trillion to the global economy by 2030? Exactly. So for news organizations, the question isn't if they should use AI, it's how they use it to survive and, well, thrive. That's really the core of it. It is. Our sources offer a really clear thesis on this. AI has to augment the industry, not automate it completely. The whole goal is to offload those repetitive manual tasks that just burn so much time. Right? Freeing up the journalist to do what humans do? Beth? Exactly. Deeper analysis, complex investigative work, and, you know, the crucial human parts of storytelling. Okay, so let's unpack that shift. Because to really appreciate the speed of this new model, I think we have to look back at just how, how inefficient the old way of doing things was. Oh, absolutely. That old model was so rigid, so slow. You had news gathering, then production, and finally distribution. A straight line. A sequential process built for a pre-digital age. Totally. And think about the bottlenecks. I mean, the hours spent just manually transcribing an interview for one or two quotes or a journalist having to sift through, you know, thousands of public records by hand. And the feedback loop, a total disaster. Once a newspaper was printed or a show aired, audience feedback, if you even got it, came way, way later. You were locked in. So inflexible, so inefficient for today's world. And the new model just flips that entire structure on its head. The journalist is moving from being a reactive reporter to what the sources are calling an information officer. An information officer, okay? The workflow becomes dynamic, it's iterative, and it's built to be constantly responsive. And the collaboration at the heart of it all is this, this human-machine partnership. It's fascinating. We're talking about leveraging data as raw material, data from sensors, from archives, and treating audience input not as an afterthought, but as a, as a core ingredient. Right. It informs the very next step of the reporting process. It's a fundamental change in mindset. Data becomes the fuel, and the journalist becomes the architect of the systems that process that fuel. So how is AI actually making this happen? Let's start at the very beginning with news gathering. The machines are acting like, like superhuman scouts. They're seeing patterns and connections the human eye could just never manage. The biggest benefit here is data mining and outlier detection. AI is incredible at spotting patterns. Okay, give us an example. The Washington Post uses reporting bots not to write news, but to monitor data patterns. You know, in financial filings, crime stats, election results. And they immediately flag anomalies that human journalists then investigate. It points them to scoops they would otherwise completely miss. And for breaking news, it's more than just a scoop finder. It's an early warning system. A genuinely essential one. Reuters has its news tracer platform, which monitors social media in real time. That system detected the Ecuador earthquake 18 minutes before other major international publishers. 18 minutes. That's an eternity in a breaking news situation. It is. That lead time isn't just a competitive edge. It's a public safety asset. And it connects directly to that idea of data as raw material. It's not just software. Journalists are now using data from physical sensors, from smart devices out in the real world like the South Florida Sun Sentinel investigation. Exactly. 
They want a Pulitzer for using GPS data from police cars to investigate speeding officers. They took this data, which is just being passively generated, and turned it into a powerful objective tool for accountability. Which is phenomenal. But it also brings us to a really crucial point that our sources kept stressing the constant, indispensable need for human oversight because these algorithms make mistakes. They do because an algorithm only knows the rules it was fed. Look at BuzzFeed News. They trained an AI to find hidden spy planes by recognizing these repetitive flight patterns, and it worked. But it also mistakenly flagged local skydizing operations. Why? Because they also fly in small, tight patterns. Precisely. The machine spotted the pattern perfectly, but it completely missed the context. A human had to step in and review the output to catch that false positive. Right? So journalistic intuition, applying context, verifying sources, that's the layer AI just can't replicate. Not yet anyway. Okay, so once we have the data, the patterns, the warnings, the next mountain to climb is production, turning all that raw material into articles. And this is where we see natural language generation, or NLG, handling the volume. Right? NLG is all about automating those simple formulaic reports, and the scale you can achieve is just... It's remarkable. The Associated Press used NLG to expand its financial coverage from just 300 companies to over Force Unit 400. Wow, that is a nearly 15-fold increase in output. The sources said this saved their journalists about 20% of their time. But, you know, that brings up a critical question for me. If machines are so good at this high-volume, formulaic news, is there a risk the industry just focuses too much on that? You know, stock reports, real estate sales at the expense of the really difficult long-form investigative work. That's the tension. That's what the newsmaker has to manage. The goal isn't to replace the investigative work, it's to fund it. By handling the 4,000 earnings reports, you free up the time and the budget for the big, high-impact story. A key application for this is something called branch writing. Okay, break that down for us. It sounds pretty technical. It's really just smart templating. The system can generate different versions of a story based on predefined conditions. So for a real estate report, it's not just filling in numbers. If sales are up 5%, the template uses upbeat language. If they're down 5%, it dynamically chooses a different template, a different tone. The journalist programs the logic, the machine executes the tone. And that leads directly to localization at a massive scale, which is so crucial for news organizations trying to reconnect with local audiences. Look at the UK's press association, the PA. They used NLG to create local stories from national data. For example, they generate a report on childhood obesity in a specific borough, like Havering. The first draft, just the dry statistics, is automated. But then a local reporter steps in to add the critical context. They interview the mayor, talk about the council strategy, and they humanize the data. The machine does the math. The human provides the meaning. Which brings us to the other side of the coin, natural language processing, or NLP. So this is about comprehension, not generation. It's exactly this is about machines reading complex texts to polite insights. And this is where we see journalistic insight getting a real speed boost. Vox, for example, used NLP to analyze and quantify themes in President Obama's State of the Union addresses so they could track how often he said economy versus jobs over time. It's about quantifying rhetoric. Yes. Or look at the Wall Street Journal. They used NLP to analyze GE CEO letters over several years to spot disappearing buzzwords. They saw terms like added manufacturing vanish, and that revealed these major shifts in corporate strategy long before they were announced. The machine spots the trend in the corporate speak. And the journalist explains the why. Right. And all this brings us squarely to the main ethical challenge here. Yeah, the byline dilemma. Who gets the credit? Yeah. Our sources show two very different camps on this. The Associated Press is often really transparent. They'll disclose that a machine generated the story. They credit the machine. But then you have organizations like the PA. 
They only credit the human reporter who designed the template and the story logic. Their argument is that because a human initiated it, designed it, and verified it, the story belongs to the human. But if the machine is doing 90% of the heavy lifting, isn't hiding that a little misleading for the reader? It feels like an issue of trust? It absolutely is. And it raises a really interesting question for you, listener. If the journalist's primary role is now programming the template, where does human creativity end and machine augmentation begin? The industry really hasn't settled that yet. Okay, so once production is done, AI steps in to revolutionize distribution, getting the story to the right audience at the right time. And this is where it powers the business model. The Wall Street Journal has a very sophisticated paywall. It uses AI to predict the exact moment a reader is most likely to subscribe based on their reading habits. They're also letting journalists create multiple formats at scale. I think the Review Journal increased its video production by something like 372% a month. Yeah, using video automation tools, taking an article and just automatically generating a short video summary. That kind of volume would be impossible for human teams alone. And now we're in the voice command era of the internet. Right? Smart speakers are essential. AI-powered text-to-speech is having things like Bloomberg's The Bulletin, Flash Briefings. It's all about delivering automated audio versions of articles for people on the go. All of these tools, from gathering to distribution, they all seem to converge on this new philosophy. Iterative journalism. It sounds a bit like marketing jargon, but it's actually a brilliant methodology. It really is. Iterative journalism is basically empathetic journalism. It's driven by real-time data. It's a responsive process that adjusts coverage in real time to serve the changing needs of the audience. And the key practice here is the minimally viable story. This is such a huge departure from the old model. Instead of pouring months of resources into an investigation based on a hunch, you launch a small prototype, like a simple automated alert about a local health trend. And then you test the reaction. If that automated story shows a huge spike in interest, say, in childhood obesity rates, then you commit your scarce human resources to a full investigation. It's low-risk reporting that guarantees an audience. So you're moving beyond just tracking clicks and basic demographics into what the sources call augmented audience understanding? Yeah. And AI is helping human editors really understand audience sentiment. It moderates thousands of comments and clusters them by viewpoint. The New York Times and Washington Post do this. It lets editors gauge the prevailing narrative instead of just reacting to the loudest person in the room. And public media like KQED are crowdsourcing questions. They got over 1,000 submissions about homelessness, and they let those questions guide their reporting. The audience is defining the scope of the story from the start. And this whole approach is really underpinned by design thinking. It forces journalists to think like product managers. They have to ask three key questions. Okay, what are they? First is desirability. Does the audience actually want or need this? Are we filling a real gap? Second, feasibility. Can the newsroom technically do it? This means breaking down old silos. Journalists have to learn some technical skills and work with data scientists. And third, viability. Is the method financially sustainable? And to measure this, newsrooms are using business metrics like OKR's objectives and key results. OKR's. So it's about making sure your experiment, your innovation, actually aligns with the broader strategic goal. Precisely. You link your experiment, say, launching 100 automated local stories, to a financial goal like increasing local digital subscriptions. It puts a measurable framework around innovation. Ultimately, the material seems to reassure us that AI is here to strengthen journalism. It lets reporters differentiate their work, scale their production, and gain context they never could before. But the personal contributions, the judgment, the empathy, the pursuit of truth, that all remains central. That's the human constant. It's the art of storytelling. It's journalistic intuition. The insights from AI should be used as a compass. It tells the newsmaker where to look. 
It's not a clock to give you an infallible, unquestionable answer. You always have to question the output. And that leads us to a final provocative thought for you to consider as we wrap up. We know AI systems are often described as these opaque black boxes. Their decision-making is incredibly hard to audit, and they often lack any kind of built-in explainability. And that's critical because these algorithms are being used everywhere by governments, by corporations, to make huge decisions, setting criminal risk scores, approving loans, dynamic pricing. These systems have enormous power, but they're not designed to explain why they reached a certain conclusion. So given that reality, how vital is the journalist's future role in actively investigating and holding these complex, unseen algorithms accountable? We're talking about the responsibility to audit the automated structures of power. Think about the kind of groundbreaking work ProPublica has done on machine bias. The newsmaker's mission more and more is about shining a light not just on human corruption, but on the bias that's hidden deep inside the code itself.